In this video, I'm going to talk you guys through the best GPUs that you can buy right now for 1080p, 1440p and 4K gaming at a whole host of different price points. With key sales periods coming up, people looking to build new PCs in time for Christmas and a huge range of rumours about new cards that we could see launch as early as January next year, I'm going to be talking you guys through the good, the bad and the downright ugly so you can make the right decision for your next build. Let's do this. Now I'm going to be working through the best GPUs to buy from the cheapest to the most expensive with easy to understand gaming benchmarks and performance figures along the way. Feel free to use the timestamps below to skip through but first let's talk about the state of the GPU market because right now things are a bit interesting. Obviously we've got the Nvidia RTX 40 series and AMD Radeon RX 7000 series. They're the two main current gen lineups of graphics cards. Some buyers may find good deals on last gen 6000 Radeon on cards and of course the RTX 30 series too. Now I also like to mention in these videos how the naming schemes work. The higher the number the more powerful the card. That's true for AMD and Nvidia. If it's got TI on the end for Nvidia, XT or XTX on the end from AMD it's a slightly more powerful version of the non-TI or non-XTX card should such a thing exist. And if it's got super on the end that's basically a refresh of the non-super GPU. But new stuff is coming so let me talk about that very briefly. We're expecting Nvidia to launch the 5090 and 5080 in January of next year. Some rumours suggest we could also see the 5070 Ti and 5070 as early as January with the 5060 and 60 Ti potentially before April. AMD are expected to respond. Whether or not this will be at CES 2 we're not quite so sure but what they have confirmed is that they won't be competing on the top top end of the market. So the 5090 and potentially upcoming 5080 AMD look like they're well just not going to play ball with. But does that mean you should wait? Well, not necessarily. The RTX 40 series and Radeon 7000 series were both pretty good lineups of GPUs. And apart from one or two cards in each stack, there weren't many bad GPUs of the current generation. We've also seen the pricing on pretty much all of these cards fall pretty drastically from its MSRP, especially on AMD, but on Nvidia to a lesser extent too. And it goes without saying that when Nvidia and AMD do launch these mystical new GPUs, you won't be able to buy them to begin with. You'll have to wait three weeks for them to hit the shelves and they will sell at MSRP or above. So if you want to build a PC right now or you want a system to get gaming on by the end of the year or even by the end of January, these are the cards I would recommend you pick from. The cheapest card on my list comes in right now at around 249 US dollars and it's a card that has a few caveats. This is the RTX 3060. Now we're starting off with a last gen GPU for this recommendation for a couple of key reasons. This is a decent performing card that provides fairly good 1080p performance and is about as entry level as I'd go. Typically the GPU should make up 40 to 60% of the budget in your build depending on how much you're going to spend meaning this is going to work for builds in the region of six or seven hundred dollars. This card has the advantage of 12 gigabytes of video memory that's four gigs more than Nvidia's newer RTX 4060 but in truth it's not really got the gaming horsepower to make it that great at 1440p where that VRAM is going to be important. Let's take a quick moment to talk about VRAM. It's been a hot topic this year. The more you've got, the better. Broadly speaking, for 1080p, you can just about get away with 8GB. For 1440p gaming, you want 12 or 16. And for 4K gaming, you want 16, 20, potentially even more. While the 12 gigs of VRAM on this card does make it a good contender, the problem it's got is that it's just plainly not as powerful as something like this, the RTX 4060, which too falls into the sub $300 price bracket. Now, when the 4060 first landed, I made a pretty scathing video which was titled don't buy the RTX 4060. Now while my views on this card haven't softened a great deal what I would say and this is probably a controversial take is that this GPU is in many ways a better buy than this one. The 4060 is actually in my view a better buy than the 3060. Now that doesn't make me any less annoyed at the fact the 4060 only has 8 gigs of VRAM. That by the way is the biggest downside of this over the previous card and while the fact this GPU has less memory bandwidth than the 3060 also really 
angers me, you are going to get significantly more performance on the 4060. And like it or not, side by side, that is the card that is going to provide better performance for a similar price point. You can see some of our side by side comparisons on your screen, whether you're looking at Apex Legends, whether you're looking at Fortnite, whether you look at a AAA title like Alan Wake 2, all of these three games, you're going to see better performance on the 4060 than the 3060. But James, what about AMD? Well, at this price point, they've only got the RX 7600, which has the same problems as the 4060, but this has the advantage of things like DLSS, which genuinely are very beneficial at 1080p, where you want to try and get better frame rate. AMD FSR is still a little way behind in my view. Now, if you can afford to spend that little bit more money, I think it makes a lot of sense, which brings me on to my next card. The best GPU for in and around $350. This is the AMD Radeon RX 7700 XT. Now, when this card first landed, believe it or not, AMD retailed it for $449. Now you can find one on Newegg at $359 USD, which is a frankly unbelievable deal. That's going to cost you around $100 more than our RTX 3060 and around $70, $75 more than the RTX 4060. And for that, you get a lot more performance. Not only do you get a big increase in rasterization, that's basically the term we use for gaming without DLSS, FSR, ray tracing, just pure gaming in its simplest form, giving you a lot more performance in all of those games that you're going to be playing. You're going to see a 20 to 30 percent increase across the board by going for the 7700 XT over the RTX 4060. And of course, an even bigger jump when compared to the 3060. This has 12 gigabytes of VRAM, but crucially has enough power to actually leverage the 12 gigs of VRAM. Ultimately, you only need the VRAM if your GPU is capable of rendering enough pixels and enough textures to fill the VRAM in the first place. For me, this is the best value future-proof GPU. And while yes, you can never be 100% positive that this is going to be fine in 2029, we know that the VRAM and 1440p performance on this is going to set you up well now and into the future. Now, if you've got around about $100 more to spend, that moves us up to the RX 7800 XT. And when this card landed, I'd say it was AMD's best value GPU in a long time. The price drop on the 7700 XT we just talked about and the 7900 GRE, which we'll talk about in a moment, have made this a slightly harder buy. But for $450, it gives you a good performance increase over the 7700 XT at a competitive price point and with a wide range of coolers to choose from. Now, the main advantage of this over the 7700 XT is it's just got that little bit more performance. That's going to make things like 1440p gaming a bit more comfortable and take you from being at 60 or 70 FPS to closer to 80 or 90. That is what's going to give it that edge as well in the future. Remember, games don't get easier to run. They get harder and harder. And having the extra 10% performance now for a little more spend may be something you see as beneficial. Moving up one more line on the echelon and uh, AMD have a bit of a lockout with this, the RX 7900 GRE. And I'm going to make a bold statement here. This might be one of my favorite G GPUs ever. The crazy thing about this card, which by the way, comes in at a shave of a $500, depending on the cooler and model you pick. Latest pricing for all of these will be down in the description so you can track the price of this in your region at the time you're watching. And you get incredible performance for that figure. It's amazing. This card for 1440p is all most people are ever going to need. Yes, there are some disadvantages over NVIDIA. It doesn't have as good ray tracing. FSR isn't as good as DLSS. But if you want rasterization, that's pure gaming performance, this is a price to performance king. And frankly, anything else from AMD and NVIDIA's lineup are going to struggle to compete with the value proposition of this GPU. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying that a $500 GPU is suddenly cheap, but in the current market where we're working from $250 right up to about $1,000 on mainstream GPUs, that's of course excluding the RTX 4090, then this is a really worthy card to consider. You can find the performance of this in a range of titles on your screen from all the testing that we've done and it never fails to impress me as far as GPUs go. Now if you've got a little more money to spend, about $600, you may want to consider this, the RTX 4070 Super. Now I want to be clear when I say that the GRE is a better card than the 70 Super for some buyers. The GRE is a slightly quicker card in rasterization than the 70 Super, but the 70 Super gives you the advantage of ray tracing, of DLSS, NVIDIA frame generation is very good. If you're playing games like Alan Wake, Cyberpunk, Black Myth Wukong, Star Wars Outlaw, Laws, this is a better rounded card. And if you look at the market share that AMD and NVIDIA have, you look at the Steam hardware survey, a lot of you guys obviously agree. I think what NVIDIA have done with this is very good, and it's also an incredibly power efficient GPU. Now, moving through up to the next price bracket, and this is actually the final entrant in the lineup today 
from AMD. And I'm going to explain why that's the case in a moment's time. For a shave over $600, making it my favorite GPU for under $650, this is the 7900 XT. And it's AMD's penultimate card in the lineup. Now again, this is going to provide great rasterization performance, but at the high end, I do feel like you miss some of those NVIDIA exclusive features in certain titles. And I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I find it hard to recommend the GPU for about $600 that in some respects is a little flawed. And this is why AMD have said they're just not going to compete at the top end with Radeon 8000 series or RDNA 4 as we've come to know it. This though is a really good card if you want that fantastic gaming performance, high frame rates, that rasterization. This is going to prove a really good option for you. And at around $620, which is a staggering $280 below its original $899 MSRP, this is a bit of a bargain. Now, the final three cards then, where does this leave us? Well, the next card on the list for around $700 is the 4070 Ti Super. Now, this is actually a massive performance improvement over the normal 4070 Super. And in fact, it's probably more of an RTX 4080. In fact, that's actually kind of how it started. And what that means is you get performance that's close to the 4080, but with less VRAM and a lower price point. Now, this is going to give you really, really good ray tracing, DLSS and rasterization performance in a whole host of titles. And if you want specifically an NVIDIA card, but don't want to spend the crazy money you'll be parting with for a 4080 or 4090, this is what I'd go for. We like the 70 Ti Super a lot here on the channel. And while it's expensive, it isn't what I'd call stupid territory and it's still going to give you great frame rates. Now that brings me on to the final two cards. And I said earlier in this video that I wasn't going to harp on too much about what Nvidia and AMD are rumored to be bringing because they are just that, rumors. And the likelihood is, and I'd bet some serious money on this, whatever they bring out ain't going to be cheap. And it's going to cost you probably more than what's already out. Again, I find it hard to convincingly recommend you guys spend the best part of $1,000 in the case of the 4080 Super and closer to $2,000 in the case of the 4090 on cards that may become just a little out of date in only a few weeks time. Now the 80 Super is the card I'd recommend you buy if you want really the best performance without spending the crazy $2,000 that the 4090 offers. And unless you really need the VRAM and you really need another 5%, this is the GPU I'd go for. Undoubtedly, the 90 just exists because, well, AMD haven't got anything to counter it, and Nvidia know that some people will spend a lot of money to get something that is simply the best. Now, what Nvidia have done with these two cards is a bit of an engineering marvel. AMD have nothing to compete at this high end, and you can see on a graph where these things top the charts consistently why these are what you'd buy if you want awesome rasterization, great frame rates, and fantastic ray traced and DLSS performance. So that's that then. That's my recommendation of the best GPUs you can buy on the market right now. If you're wondering what CPUs you should buy with these and you want to pair them up, you can find our CPU and GPU combos video down below. And if you want to pick up a pre-built from our new company, Geeker PC, we're based only in the UK for now, featuring any of these GPUs, I'll leave links in the description below too. The GPU market then, a complex one, but hopefully this video has helped you unpick at least a few of the finer details. Thanks for watching, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.